Institute is, is almost unique in the United States in that um, it's not just a mining camp. You know, there are a lot of places where you can find head frames like we have here in, in Butte, but nowhere that you can find them right in the middle of an urban environment. That's what makes Butte unique. It's that juxtaposition of the industrial um, architecture with homes and, and big businesses and all this kind of thing. Butte was a rich town because of the mining, so it became a real metropolis. Uh, in 1917, when the population was close to 100,000, Butte was the largest city between Minneapolis and Seattle. If the mineral wealth hadn't been here, Butte would not be here. There's just no question about that. So, so the geology is the underpinning of, of why Butte is here, why the mining started and, and, and lasted for so long. The mining conditions of Butte were horrendous by any civilized standard. I think in one month in 1910, as I was doing my research, 40 guys were killed in that month alone. The biggest killer, of course, was silicosis caused by the ingestion of, of dust, coarse laden dust as the miners worked their, their power drills down below. And the company resisted for years even putting water jackets on those drills to cut down the dust. And so many, many more miners became ill and died from what's called miners' consumption or, or silicosis. The miners lived where they worked. They lived in the filth that it produced. The windows in the house that I own are all painted shut because the air outside was so bad that you couldn't open your windows even if you wanted to. You dried your clothes inside. The street lights in Butte stayed on during the day. God knows America 1919 was a lot scarier place than America 2001, 2002. It really, I mean, you had anarchists running around blowing up people. There's no doubt about that, yeah, no doubt about that. One of Butte's many nicknames is the Gibraltar of Unionism. It had 34 different unions. The IWW preached one big union, and the one big union would then be the one that would have the strength to stand up to a company like the Anaconda Company, which otherwise was just in absolute total control here. The IWW, the Wobblies, the Industrial Workers of the World, was the most radical of all the union um, elements that were active in those days. Um, they were pretty closely connected with the radical fringe of socialism. If this is socialism and this is communism, here's the IWW. <laughs> they were really close to it. They really wanted to do away with the entire capitalist system. Actually, they were started in uh, 1905 in Chicago. People were disgruntled with the uh, trade unions, and they thought that it would be better to unite as one instead of having separate, uh, separate unions. Well, the IW's goals generally was the, the destruction of capitalism as quickly as possible, and this would be achieved by the one general giant strike of all the workers striking at the same time. In their judgment, if everyone stopped working at the same time, capitalism would collapse. It was the night of the 31st of uh, uh, July. That, that summer had been the hottest summer in Butte in 25 years or more. So it was uh, a, a time of, of ripe, ripe for rebellion, shall we say. And uh, what really got it all started was the Granite Mountain disaster, uh, June 8th of 1917, when um, a fire uh, in the Granite Mountain and speculator mines up, uh, up toward uh, Walkerville um, killed about 168 people. That is, to this day, still the most deadly hard rock mining disaster in U.S. history. Um, a result of that was uh, a general strike. And the strike was for good reasons. It was against poor working conditions. Frank Little is the, probably the central character um, uh, in, in that whole history. The IW sends their best organizer where the action is and where, the, in this case, the miners are extremely angry at all the deaths caused by this tragedy. So that's why he goes to Butte, okay? He was only here for about two weeks, or, well, two weeks plus 91 years, if you count the time in the cemetery. <laughs> um, and uh, he gave some really pretty inflammatory speeches. He was very popular. The, he was, he, the, the miners, no matter how much they approved or disapproved of the radicalism, they really could identify with, with his common man sort of speaking. So that night of the 31st, about three in the morning, actually on August 1st, um, according to the reports, a, uh, a black Cadillac pulled up in front of his boarding house and um, five or six 
armed uh, thugs came in saying, we are officers and we're looking for Frank Little. They found him and they dragged him out. By most accounts, he was then uh, uh, tied to the bumper of the Cadillac and dragged through the streets of town until his kneecaps were worn off. He was still alive though when they strung him up at a trestle and that's where he died. So um, clearly a murder. It, was, it had a huge impact, um, uh, notwithstanding Evil Knievel, Frank Little's funeral remains the largest that this town's ever seen. Something on the order of 10,000 people followed his casket. About 3,000 actually marched in uh, the entire procession. It's a martyr to the cause, you know, like Joe Hill, um, but didn't, the result was the same, the Union didn't succeed. After World War I, several things happened. The economy started to turn down because we didn't need copper for shell casings anymore. That was a, a definite problem for Butte. So we entered a, a version of a depression well before the Great Depression happened. Um, and things started the long decline at that point. Um, by the early 1920s, the, the socialist movement in the United States and in Butte really had lost most of its uh, strength and, and impetus. IWW, well, yeah, they, times change, they have changed with it. One of, the, one of the interesting things about the Wobblies, of course, is it's still around. Praise boss when morning work bells chime. Praise him for bits of overtime. Praise him whose bloody wars we fight. Praise him, fat leech and parasite. Ah, hell. My name is Amanda Curtis. I've lived in Butte for about a decade. I've been a member of the IWW for two years. Our goals remain the same as they have always been, that the people who produce the wealth in this country and worldwide should own what the wealth produces. I've been a member of the Wobblies for four years. It's actually a good time for us because nobody has the uh, negative feelings towards the IWW that they had in the 50s when they were, everybody said we were communists, which is not true. We've never been communists. No one knows who we are. People might have heard some of the songs, people might have read some of the literature, but it has all been in the form of historical document, uh, documentaries. We are still a consumer economy, and socialism is still a really bad word in our culture. And when I talk about some of my political feelings in the workplace, people look at me like I'm insane because they have been taught that socialism cannot work and that anyone who thinks that socialism can work is a bad, evil person. So in that regard, there's still a lot of, there's still a lot of communication problems out there between the Wobblies and the rest of the world. The legacy of capitalism is essentially the Superfund site. Um, uh, free, free reign, um, no constraints, no control for a century led to uh, what we have here, you know, uh, environmental disaster. After the amount of money that came out of this hill, we were left with very little. Uh, the people were in the workers, were left with nothing, you know, once the mine shut down, there was nothing. Economics is everything in the mining business. That's why you have booms and busts. That's why um, when stuff plays out in a little uh, gold mining camp, the camp goes away and it becomes a true ghost town. Um, so that's Butte's uniqueness too in the mining world is that it's such a huge deposit that it has remained sustainable now for 145 years or so. So um, that's, that's why Butte is still here and still a, a viable town of 30,000 even after all that. We didn't become a ghost town.